Hello there, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and we're going to talk about uh, some details on creating handwriting fonts today. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get in trouble with handwriting fonts, so I want you to pay real close attention because uh, it's like walking through a minefield. Okay, so the first step that I would take if I were creating a handwriting font would be to go to Vimeo or YouTube and search for the movie on scanning artwork into a font using scan font. So the easy way to, to get started would be to use our scan font product. If you're real good at uh, using a scanner and you know how to then import a bitmap into Fund Harfer and trace it and so forth and so on, um, maybe you could get by without using scan font, but you're not going to get by with uh, missing the tips that I provided in that movie because there's a lot of ways to make sure you get a good scan. Okay, so let's uh, pretend that you have scanned a font in and traced it and everything is wonderful and it's sitting here in Fontographer. I want you to notice some things right off the bat. If you move this character, you're going to see that the terminators of these characters kind of overlap each other. Okay, so that means that whoever is creating this font would want to draw it in such a way that it looks real pretty when it's um, when they're merged together. I can show you uh, several fonts like Brush Script that kind of look like this, where it's kind of like something's not right and it's not very aesthetically pleasing. So what we've done here, we've gone into the window menu and open metrics window and when we've got our font displayed in here we click on the actual glyph to get that terminator right in the exact spot we want don't use the K line because that would be uh, kerning if you use the left side bearing or right side bearing lines you can get in trouble uh, while we're talking, one thing that some people do is to take this and move it on top of the L. If you do that, your font will crash. So do not move the uh, right-hand side bearing or any side bearing on top of another side bearing. Okay, so let's move along here. I want to show you uh, again how these terminators are overlapping, but because of the fact that as you can see here now, the character is actually outside of the M square. We call this a negative offset character. We're moving this character in a negative direction, see? So it actually hangs outside of the uh, M square. Let's go take a look at that character. You see? And if I move that in the metrics window, it'll even be further to the left. Now, when some people are creating a, uh, a logo, for example, they can get themselves into trouble. Let's say I was going to make a logo that had the word font. If I come in here, and then I decide I'm going to manually work on this, now we're talking about the outline world. Now we're not talking about metrics, see? So what some people might do is say, well, I'll just move this side bearing over. I'm making a logo. I don't really uh, need to worry about these things that Jimmy's talking about. And I'll just move that on top of there like that for purposes of creating a logo. Okay. Let's just see. You'll find, or well, maybe I should turn the points off you'll find that in some applications that uh, you'll have an overlap here where you'll see white on top of black and also some applications will push the characters away from each other so you got yourself into a real mess if you're going to do it this way so if you are going to create a logo that has a word in it and you don't want to use a negative offset then what you're going to have to do is come in here, move that character on top of the other one to the best of your ability. I'm not going to try to uh, uh, become Picasso here today. 
but uh, what you can do then is select all and then go to element and remove overlap okay so that is a way that you could uh, make things look pretty in a handwriting font in a logo but what I really wanted to discuss was your typical uh, handwriting font that is not a logo and producing a negative offset so let's get back to that concept now because I've been playing with the characters I've got to recreate my offset another problem with um, overlapping characters instead of offsetting them is the hinting can push things apart now the reason I mention that is because a lot of users are using uh, Fontographer with auto hint turned on they don't even know to look up here on the hint menu so they've got the auto hint on and they've got hints in the font now just to give you uh, a refresher course you can go search for the beginner's guide to hinting on Vimeo or on YouTube but I'm going to give you a short refresher course here hinting is the process of nudging characters in up or down left or right to make them look as crisp as possible but the caveat to that is that hinting was designed for Roman characters with uh, 45 degree angles and 90 degree angles hinting was not designed to be used with script fonts so I will get a lot of contact from customers who have made a beautiful handwriting font they didn't realize they had auto hint on and the font looks terrible uh, once it's been uh, generated and installed so keep that in mind no hinting allowed on uh, handwriting fonts to get back to what we were talking about we've got one little area to finish talking about here is that you, you uh, need to understand that when you're drawing your characters and creating your side bearings you need to uh, allow them to extend beyond the M square if they're going to be able to connect to the other terminators so it's kind of going to take some getting used to especially if you're doing a handwriting font where you've actually written your handwriting on a piece of paper and scanned it in so it's going to take a little getting used to uh, how to play with these terminators here notice this I can move them around and kind of get a feel for how far should they go I've noticed over the years that about an eighth of an inch overlap seems to work pretty well but of course that would all depend on the font so let's review you're going to scan your artwork in you're going to uh, adjust the terminators here in the outline window you're going to make sure auto hint is not on and then you're going to go into the uh, metrics window and start experimenting with creating an offset so this has been your quick start guide to handwriting fonts uh, of course there's a lot of other issues that can come up but you should be able to review your tech notes on troubleshooting points and paths in case you've got bad path direction uh, you can re review your importing artwork procedures uh, search for importing artwork into Fontographer is a good tech note or good video and so thank you for watching the Fontographer tutorial series please review your manual for more details and as always let us know if there's some other topics you'd like to see covered